Good to go. All right. So uh, here today, and uh, we're just we're gonna have like a very very casual like sharing about uh, the data privacy the practice I have been doing. And uh, actually in China, uh, the, uh, there are like two. Uh, how to say that? Like two practice areas or two matters that uh, you you may have to like, pay attention to uh, about data privacy. One is like data, the other one is privacy. So data is more like like cybersecurity thing that uh, you know to, like how to make your data secure and how to process the data, how to uh, store the data or transfer data, delete the data uh, in a safe way. And and I think that's more. Uh, you know, we have many uh, IT experts today, so. Uh, 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 what I'm going to talk to uh, a little bit more about is the privacy issues, uh, which uh, we, we, we would call it like personal information protection. And, and there's a new law uh, coming out uh, a few months ago, and uh, last year uh, it's called like PIPL, Personal Information Protection Law. And uh, uh, so uh, it's, it, it, it's like the first law in China. It's more similar to the uh, GDPR in, in Europe and some other countries. And it's it's uh, it uh, it lays the foundation as the you know the, the, as a, a fundamental law in in a country. Uh, and, with regard to the pers uh, protection of our personal uh, data, and, and it, it, it issues everybody in, in in the country like how to properly handle, how to properly uh, process the personal information that uh, that no matter it's a business entity that collects or a person collects. So uh, here today, I, I'm gonna just share with you some practical tips. If you own a company or you run a company or you just manage. Uh, a business that process any kind of personal information and this will hopefully this will be some like helpful tips uh, so please click uh, click and there are no pictures in this PowerPoint and yeah it's gonna be boring so make sure you have your coffee and next page so what is PIPL so it's China's personal information protection law. It's first law that uh, that that that, that uh, well, it's not the first law that talks anything about personal information, but it's the first law that talks only about personal information, and uh, it's officially uh, promulgated by the National Congress. So it's kind of like higher ranking law than and, and, and any other like smaller regulations or local rules, codes or municipal uh, regulations that will be uh, promulgated or made in, in, in the future gradually uh, just based on this one. So this this will be like first and this will be the foundation and it took effect on November 1st. So uh, that which means if you uh, have not uh, implemented any uh, measures in your company or, or, or the business that you're running uh, with regard to this law that uh, uh, you're gonna need some tips and um, next page please okay so uh, uh, this is uh, a big paragraph just skip it I, I just uh, quickly uh, give you an idea about just hold a second and about the jurisdictional thing so uh, you know it's a Chinese law. It, it's uh, uh, so if you run a business in China, and you have to like you know uh, uh, make sure it's in compliance with this law. But if you're doing business outside of China, you do not have any business entity. You do not even have any employee inside of China. But you might also be you know uh, get caught by this law if 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 you are providing products or services to uh, like. Uh, like Chinese individuals to individual natural person located in China you collect their personal information uh, outside of China and that means you still get covered uh, in, in this law also if you are like a consulting company or data processing company you are located outside of China but you are collecting personal information from China and, and, and you know uh, like to do some like online uh, like consumer insights for example and you still have to like abide by this law because you're analyzing you're collecting processing the personal information from China and yeah please next page 
So what is personal information and what is sensitive personal information? So personal, uh, these are two uh, words that, that has like, clear definitions uh, under Chinese law. First one is what is personal information? And basically it's information related to an identified or identifiable natural person. The identified or identif like, like your ID, right? Like your ID or, or your address. If, you, if someone can, can locate you at, as the like property owner, uh, just 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 look at the address. The address would be your personal information, and it's about natural person. And uh, the, like many people ask me, like whether their company name, their uh, the registration number or register address or business address of their company is personal information because it, some, sometimes it's kind of uh, confidential. Uh, it's not because it does not uh, involve any natural person. It's a, a like business association or entity or partnership or, or listed uh, company whatever it's not a natural person it's not a personal information uh, next one is what is sensitive person what about email email, uh, email address yeah uh, if it's a uh, personal email if it's a personal it's a phone number email phone number email yeah uh, add id card and all your like healthcare uh, records you know like hospital or insurance policy you know anything that has your like personal uh, that that can identify you that like other people will take a look at oh that's you yeah How and that's it name? just the name yeah. well um, it, 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 it depends, uh, you, you have to look at the, the context. If you just, you know, just go online and tell everybody your name, it's fine. But you want to stay anonymous. Sometimes when you go online, you, you order something, you do not want to disclose your name. You just, uh, I, you know, to just make some like a random purchase. And it's not necessary for uh, the seller to ask for your name then it's it's your personal information you have the discretion not to di disclose your name yeah and how about the WeChat profile photo we, WeChat profile photo like only 10% of the times is actually in person yeah yeah that's <laughs> uh, yeah and, and same thing it depends on the context and then if you put your your face on it, that it's kind of like personal information. And also it depends on who you want to share. You share it with the public or just only a limited number of your friends. But if you just put a, like, a face of a cat, and, and, or a famous kind of the grumpy cat as your profile photo, like, there are like thousands of people using a grumpy cat. If we, if we delete a grumpy cat photo from the internet, we may save like one third of the internet and like storage. So. Uh, uh, back to the principle it depends on the context and so sensitive inf personal information is a, a small part of personal information but it's more sensitive it's uh, uh, is well according to the law it says uh, it may easily lead to the infringement of an individual's personal dignity or harm to personal property safety uh, it, uh, just use your common sense. Like you're re, re, you can you you can make a decision like whether some some information is sensitive personal information about like biometrics, uh, religious beliefs, specific identity such as like sexual orientation, and uh, some. Uh, uh, yeah, medical health records, financial accounts, your bank accounts, bank records, bank statements, and, and other like, oh, and specifically personal information relating to minors under the age of 14. So no matter what kind of personal information it is, as long as it relates to a minor that's under the age of 14 is sensitive personal information and it requires specific consent from the parents or guardian of that of that of that kid uh, and also it requires uh, some additional steps you're gonna take to protect this kind of personal information uh, next page please so uh, anonymized information is not personal information under PIPO, uh, which means uh, you have a, a set of personal information, you know, people's name, bank cards, or, or, or medical records. Uh, you can do some like technical uh, changes to the data to anonymize. 
But anonymize has specific meaning, which means that you cannot reverse the process. Once a, an, an information is anonymized, it no longer be changed or, or technically cannot be reversed back to its original status so that some other people may still identify you. Uh, so you can just cross out or detect some certain information and it's permanent and that's anonymized or anonymization means and there's also a uh, a, a, a different but not that strict uh, uh, technical process which uh, you can use like code names code names of a person you know so, so that other people may not see who it who it is but it's reversible it, once you, you you know replace the the code name you can find a real person that's not a, anonymized information but in some uh, the, uh, especially in large corporations like HR management purposes they will use code names for certain uh, like HR management uh, uh, that that just to to have like an extra layer of protection of personal information so uh, that's uh, that's encouraged under the law so uh, let's just tell you a little bit difference about it so once just just remember, once the information is fully anonymized, it's no longer a personal information on the PIPO. And you're, uh, I think you have more flexibility to process the information. Uh, next page. So how to prepare your company? Here comes uh, the tips. So uh, make sure you have policies and procedures include, first one is a notice and consent for, form. Um, uh, 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 in the, the law has like many requirements on how uh, your company or your business should process personal information no matter it's your employees personal information or your clients or business partners or suppliers personal information um, and consent would be one of the large uh, uh, thing you, you do so you, you get cleared uh, from the law so it, it, and, and it's and once you have a, a consent form signed by by the counterparty by the data pro, a subject that providing you with the data it is clear clearly note if you clearly notify the person like how you're gonna use uh, their personal information how you're gonna process where you store the personal information and how long you're gonna store the inf personal information and how you delete it or whether you transfer transfer or transmit the personal information to a third party once everything is clear and you have a very clear consent written consent from the data subject and then you are okay to process to collect process the data and second one is a service contract because uh, sometimes you you have a, like a bunch of personal data but you're not a data processor right? maybe you're uh, you're doing like coaching or or consulting services but but data processing is not your business but you have a bunch of data what to do you might uh, transfer it to a third party to manage the data for you some some uh, IT companies or some data privacy companies uh, offer that services um, make sure that you do some like kind of uh, due diligence that uh, you need to record what kind of due diligence you did to make sure that the third party uh, no matter it's a supplier or business partner has the capacity or has um, legitimate ways to protect the, the, the data you transfer to that the party and then you sign a, con a service contract and to make sure that the data is properly protected at least under the contract and make sure the contract is effective and enforceable under Chinese law and the third one is a standard contract with overseas data recipients sometimes especially for international business and they transfer data across borders like for example like HR some companies do not have HR people in China but they have a small team maybe like 10 people or 20 people working here uh, and their HR are located in a, in a hub office maybe in Hong Kong or Singapore so they have to transfer the data uh, outside of mainland China so that's uh, that's like cross-border transfer and that uh, that uh, there are like specific requirements under the law about how you transfer the data and before you transfer the data you also need to do a, like due diligence if it's if you transfer data to a third party but if you transfer data to your 
like parent company uh, outside of China to uh, to your uh, like hub office, uh, in, uh, like APEC hub office, or to headquarters in Europe or in, in North America. You also need to sign a contract between your China entity and your and the entity that receives this data, and. Uh, 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 you can sign this contract now. There are certain clauses that uh, you know, uh, it's clarified, but but uh, as we know that the government uh, also have uh, a bunch of lawyers uh, drafting a standard contract, and we may see that uh, maybe this year uh, it'll come out uh, quickly, and uh, like everybody needs to update it and just uh, sign it with your parent company or or your partner, uh, overseas partner companies. Yeah. And that's uh, three tips for this page. And next one. So uh, there are technical measures. Uh, on previous page, we talked about like procedures, paperwork. But sometimes you, you sign a paperwork and you just forget about it. And that's not going to help you to, to, to get compliant with the law. So there are technical measures. Uh, first one is you need to do like regular data flow analysis, especially your uh, like, uh, 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 IT company or internet company in that you, you process a lot of data. Data flow analysis is like, uh, oh, I'm talking about personal information data flow analysis, just, just for today's topic. Uh, just, uh, there are certain uh, like flows of data, yeah, that, of personal data. One is HR, you know, when, when people uh, uh, attend interviews uh, at your company and you decide to hire them and, and then transfer the data to your HR, HR would may transfer their data to uh, uh, like HR company, uh, HR like uh, uh, third party service firms or, or, or process the, 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 the personal data, employees data. So you, you just need to understand how the personal information, how the personal data flows through your company and then decide what to do and, and how to do it to, to, to be compliant with the law. Second one is data classification, encryption, and de-identification. So de-identification is the, the, the thing I just talked about uh, a few pages earlier uh, with anonymization. Anonymization is irreversible, and de-identification is reversible, it just, it, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good way to protect the personal information when it's flowing through your company, uh, and, and you make sure that when data is flow, when it's classified and in, encrypted, and also you need to un uh, understand who has access, who has visibility um, the, of such data that, you know, uh, for example, only HR people has visibility to the, the employee's personal information, like their, their bank records or, 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 or uh, their pre, uh, prior in, uh, uh, employment and, and information. And then only, only financial people or finance people or uh, accountants have access to uh, the employees or management, shareholders, bank accounts, because for like dividend distribution or, or, or year end bonus. So once it's classified and, and encrypted and, and de -identified, uh, de identified, and then that I think most of the personal information that uh, that's go through your company uh, can be like safely and, and, and complying with the law. And third one is uh, you need to communicate like employees, make sure everyone, I think th this will be uh, uh, a big tax and you make, make sure everyone understand what the company is doing to protect everyone's personal information plus uh, other personal information you collect outside of company from your supplier from your clients customers and and do a regular training and uh, maybe I don't know like twice a year or once a year because the what because uh, uh, you know the law first reason is the law changes a lot and maybe that I talk about it tomorrow it changes and uh, the second one is that uh, it's complicated and it requires uh, large corporations have uh, like data protection officers especially companies that that has like, established their business in, in Europe because GDPR is one of like most strict uh, data protection laws uh, in the world and when when the company have a team or have like 
like a DPO that uh, uh, handles this kind of training every day, um, and, and the, the employees will also get some some knowledge. But if you are a smaller business, you're you're a startup or, or just growing a business, uh, you, should, you do, do not have to like spend that much money and that or or, or time on, on this thing. But regular training is is necessary because people will forget, people will come and go, and and also I I I, I a couple of times I I give this kind of like training like regular training for for my my clients like we do like a three hour training or five hour training after that i don't think they remember everything but it's okay if they only remember like 20 percent of what i said or they they you know keep notes of the takeaways and then it's good to go as long as regular because you know memories and next page so what would be the consequences of non-compliance? And you know, people would ask the question like, if I just don't do it, you know, uh, there are like, costs for doing nothing. One is uh, penalties. So under the law, under uh, also the uh, uh, cyberspace administration's uh, uh, rules and, and how to bring the consequences to the uh, to, to the companies uh, first one they, they will take down the apps and, and for unlimited time and, and some apps uh, you know just gone from app store and and, and 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 sometimes forever sometimes for one or two months and that means you do not have app revenue for for, for during a period of time and the second one is uh, if it gets elevated it will shut all your business down not your app not just your website they will shut down all your and they do an audit and then they will decide if we to find you or or, or, or whether you are uh, you know uh, you are in, uh, in complying with the law and then you can you are good to go and third one is they will just uh, uh, take down your app website and then stop your business activities and they will suspend your business license or or, or just cancel your business license and permits and that means you're gone you you just go bankrupt or or, or dissolve your company. That's the most, uh, you know, harsh, uh, you know, uh, uh, consequence that a company or a business that yeah, that would get from. But normally, uh, uh, the administration would not do that because the, the, well, the, 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 they understand that uh, the, the law is new, and people need time to understand the law. And also, uh, 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 it, it, it takes a lot of time, energy, and resources for each business entity to 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 understand law and also implement measures within their business and you know to be compliant and uh, and the second page uh, okay so and so normally what they would do is just give you a fine and well and and, and, and for, for the company, uh, they'll, they'll do like like no more than so it's it's a cap, one million RMB fine. It, it's large. You you can just go online. Uh, sometimes they will you know they'll, they'll make some like a public announcement like what company or which company is fined for how much, and and for for what kind of reason. Um, uh, and the second one is, uh, uh, you know, like smaller business owners uh, that uh, they, uh, they may think that, oh, uh, it's a company, it's a limited liability. I own a company, uh, I'm like protected, it's not personal liable. But but once you are found that you are in charge of business, you you are uh, involved in, in, in like violating uh, personal information or people's rights under the PIPO, you'll also get like personal fines from like 10,000 to a hundred thousand RMB fine. That would be like like fifteen K to yeah 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 one one point five K US dollars. And for grave viol uh, violations, it's not like clearly defined under the law yet. So, uh, but they, any definition of grave in the, in the Chinese version? Uh, well, different law have a different definition about like what grave means, like the criminal law. Like it's like, uh, like for example, criminal law like, for, for homicide. You have different kinds of homicide. You know, like, like if you're familiar with the idea, uh, I give an idea about like a, a U.S. law. For example, there are like homicide, first degree, second degree, or first class, second class, and manslaughter, or or, or intentional, you know, battery. Like no, 
No, but but grave have this this word is kind of uh, has its own meanings. But but uh, if you put it here, uh, it needs uh, uh, clarification. It needs clarification. What it means, uh, like what what is like grave violations? But but when uh, now we're still watching, like like because we need cases. We need the, to see those public announcements and also uh, some explanations from the government you know, when they are handling cases. Like what makes them to decide this is grave violation? Like, like, like because you look at uh, you look at like EU, you know, because uh, for example, like Google got fined like 50 billion uh, euros, like. Two years ago, uh, for violation of personal data, uh, and and you can see like, like how it's decided, and, and because it's large a, a volume of data, and and and, and it's re repetitive violation. Also, it's uh, 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 when, when they they, they did uh, a company gets caught several times, and they still just go ahead and do it, and and, and without any you know compliance measures. Uh, that all that things add up, the government might decide well that's grave violations or they're gonna you know find you a lot of money so the, the cap is 50 million RMB and 5% or 5% of annual revenue uh, next page I think we're close to the end and so yeah, yeah, that, this, 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 the damage the, the, the business will have like, a reputation, or, or you're, you're no longer a qualified dis a supplier because you get uh, requirements from from customers sometimes to ask for your procedures or private policies. Uh, if you if there are none, they are not gonna do business. You are not qualified supplier. Um, class actions, public interest lawsuits. Uh, there are uh, new laws coming out, and and yeah, takeaways, takeaways. Yeah, the only three things you're gonna remember today. <laughs> right, forget all that. Set the tone from top. You're a business owner, you're a manager, executive. Set the tone from the top. Make sure that uh, when people are, or, or when, when your employees, your partners know that uh, you know, your, your, your company are, are prepared for, for this uh, personal information protection. Second, stay tuned. The law changes a lot and frequently, especially, especially during these days because it's a new law, new new area. Third one is act early. When the law changes, act early. Don't just wait for for somebody to knock on your door and then uh, ask you to pay a fine. Uh, that's it. That's it. Sure.